All right, looks like we've got Facebook up and ready and live. We're good to go. Welcome. Oh, thank you for the fr flowers, for the roses. I appreciate you. Um, so, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about how to learn to listen to your intuition. And I got a really funny story. Um, so, last night um, I ignored my intuition twice. <clears throat> And it was revealed to me that I really should have paid attention to that quiet voice. So what happened was my kitty cat, Stumpy, she got locked outside all night in the backyard. Fortunately, like she can't escape from the backyard, but she was stuck outside all by herself. And she's not an outdoor cat at all. So um, <clears throat> the funny, it was actually three times. So during dinner... For some reason, I had this thought come into my mind thinking I should make sure that I do a head count um, that none of the cats got left outside because it was a nice day yesterday and I let the cats outside in the backyard. And so I thought, ah, you know, everybody's in. I, I wouldn't be so irresponsible to leave my cats outside is what I told myself. So we get these <clears throat> intuitions, these guidance, this um, information that pops into our mind. And I call this your intuition or that quiet, still, small voice. Um, and it's usually very quiet. It's not very loud. It'll be like some sort of thought, random thought that pops into your mind and you're like, where's this coming from? This doesn't make any sense. And most of the time, if you're not in tune with it, you tend to dismiss it. And um, then there will be things that will teach you to learn to pay attention to those things. So this example with Stumpy is exactly one of those. And the funny thing is, <coughs> excuse me, so before I went to bed, I'm laying in bed and I have my one cat, Katie, which is Stumpy's mom. She came to bed with me and she was snuggling and everything. And I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder where Stumpy is. And so I was thinking that, oh, she might be in the other room. Hey, energy man, good to see you. Um, so she might be in the other room and she might be locked in that room. And I was like, ah, I don't feel like getting up and going to uh, going upstairs to get her. And so I'm like, ah, she's fine. She wouldn't go anywhere. And <laughs> so I was like, no big deal. So that was the second time I ignored that little voice to go find Stumpy. And the funny thing is, is even before I went downstairs to bed is I was, I heard some noise out on the back deck and I thought, oh, is there a raccoon or something? Or like I heard something like crash and then I turned on the light for the deck and I didn't see anything. Well, more than likely it was probably Stumpy because I got a message from my roommate and they were saying that she um, was stuck out all night. And when they got up in the morning that they let her in. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so three times I did not listen to that small, still voice. Have you guys ever had that where you have this intuition, this calling, this understanding that, um, you should go in a certain direction, you should do a certain thing, and to you it doesn't make any logical sense at the time, so you tend to dismiss it and ignore it. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know why. Of course, I come on live and I get all congested. <laughs> so these things happened, and it kind of made me think of a big part of my healing journey when I started um, was learning to tap into that inner voice and that inner guidance and that inner direction. And that was a big part of the healing process for me. And we're going to talk a little bit of how I went through that process, how I started to learn to do that, and I'm going to share these things with you. And if this is your first time joining me, my name is Tina. I am a happiness coach, and I share with you guys my experience, strength, and hope to be able to help people with problems of depression, anxiety, um, suicidal thoughts, any of those kind of things. And I share my experience 
in hopes that you can apply this to your life and that you can start to utilize these skills that I've learned over the years to be able to um, improve your life and help you move from darker, sad, depressing emotions into a happier place. So just like that story of um, Stumpy, I when I first started doing this, I didn't really think anything of it. I used to think that stuff was a bit woo-woo and um, crunchy granola. That was stuff that more was my mom's realm. And um, although I was aware of it, I didn't fully believe in, in it or buy into it. And that was mostly because I didn't have some sort of connection with a higher power, a God of my understanding. And it was over time that I started to learn to develop that. And I developed my own understanding. So I don't quite fit into any of the boxes in religion per, per se. Um, I'm Christian-ish. Um, if you put me in a church, people would say definitely I am not a Christian, <laughs> that there's far too many things that I don't do right and I don't follow the rules on to fall under the category of Christian. Yet I do believe in the teachings of Jesus and all of that kind of stuff. But I'm also not very vocal about it <laughs> until recently um, because as I started to share with people how I got to where I am, I realized one of the missing pieces, it's not just systems and processes, it's being able to tap into a spiritual side. Um, and to for somebody who was so dependent on logic and um, seeing is believing kind of stuff, um, it was very difficult for me to develop um, any spiritual connection because I was so resistant to it. It didn't make sense to me. It seemed a, all crunchy granola, but I did believe more in science kind of thing. So energy work and understanding uh, neuro-linguistic programming and um all of that kind of stuff. Like I could see that as being something that I could anchor into a little bit better. And I used to argue with my mom about different, like she would quote things to me from the Bible and then I would argue back to her why that's not true or you'd hear this contradiction or whatever. And I think that wasn't so much that I didn't believe or didn't want to believe, but if there were certain things that didn't make sense to me, then that was enough to cause me to hesitate, to um, resist jumping all in on this. And I think that robs people a lot of the ability to connect and get some sort of benefit out of it. And I remember um, talking with somebody. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the gift. Aw, oh, energy man. Love that. Thank you. So I used to argue with this stuff all of the time because it, if there was that moment of hesitation or it didn't quite make sense or I could find evidence or proof to show that that wasn't accurate or wasn't correct, I would fight that back. And um, it was something that just really caused me to not develop that connection until when I was talking with a friend, they had said to me, they challenged, it's like, okay, well, if you don't believe, then take that belief and call that out, right? Saying, you need to be able to speak to me in a way that I actually understand in something that makes sense to me. And so, and in doing that, I started to see different signs and one of the things was um, I had lost my cat um, so there were little things that I did along the way but I had lost my cat he had fallen out of a window after we moved he was missing for about a week at the end of the week as I was driving to work I said if there is a god bring back my fucking cat and yes I talked to god that way and I know see this is one of the things that rules me out for not being a, a true Christian right and I'm like well you can still get benefit of it okay 
So don't let that kind of stuff hold you back. And I remember finally coming to a place where I did start to believe, I did start to come to understand that there is something greater than me. And that was a big comfort in knowing that I wasn't the be all and end all, right? So it, it is pretty scary space when we feel everything rests solely on our shoulders, that there's nothing working in our favor, that everything is a battle, that everything is challenging and trying. And, and I remember getting to a point of uh, surrender. So what that looked like for me was, you know what, I don't have to worry about whether or not God is real. I do believe he is. <laughs> but I don't, for me at that time, I didn't have to worry about whether or not he was real um, and or how to prove that or how to understand that fully. All I had to understand was having this connection, having this belief brought me actual comfort. And because of that, even if it's wrong, even if it's dead wrong and I, you know, the lights go out and nothing's left at the end of it. If it brought me comfort in the moment, what does it matter if it's real or not? If it brought me peace, if it brought me good orderly direction, which stands for God, um, and that helped me move along the way, that helped me move in a way that gave me hope and happiness and peace and serenity. If if all it did was that, even if it was a complete lie, it doesn't matter because it helped me in the moment. And this present moment is all we truly have. And so many times we spend our time wasting these precious moments that we have and we don't live in them fully. Um, and we are always either stuck in the past or worrying about the future. So we get depressed and we lament about what went on in the past and how uh, we either miss that or wish it was different. Um, and we spend all of that time, all of that energy stuck there. And I think in some ways, it is part of the process that we do have to go through. It is something that we have to go back and acknowledge. It's part of the human experience, and it also helps us learn and tap into that. But if we can do this in a way that we can move through these processes faster, um, we can allow ourselves to be more present. And the more that we're present in this current moment, the more we have control over our future and what our future will bring to us based on what we're doing. However, we're not in total control. It's not all on us. And being able to tap into whether that's universe or source or God or Buddha or Muhammad, whatever it is that you actually believe, if that brings you peace, if that brings you strength, I encourage you to go after that. If it is more logic and physics and quantum physics and biochemistry or whatever it is, if if it's along those lines and that brings you comfort, that brings you peace, I encourage you to uh, follow that line of thinking, follow that pathway so that you can tap into that. Um, because when we do this, it brings us much more happiness in this present moment. And it brings us that sense of comfort, that sense of peace that gives us strength. And when we have that, when we are happier, we are productive, we're much more loving, we're much more kind, we're less likely to fight, we're less likely to argue. We channel our energy into useful, productive activities, right? Um, and there's a lot of things that can prevent us from being able to tap into this side of us. And that that comes down to like five actions of if you're hungry, you're probably not going to be your best self. If you're angry, you're definitely not going to be your best self. If you're lonely and needing to connect with people, you're not going to be in the best state of mind. If you're tired, <laughs> A nap can work miracles. I know it did for me today. I was, uh, I woke up. I didn't have a good sleep. I 
pushed through and I believe in pushing through and, and hard work and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it also got to the point where I was like, okay, I can push through, but I'm not, the return on the energy that I was using wasn't actually effective. It wasn't actually working the way that I needed it to. So I had to recognize, I had to tap into what is it that I actually need? And I thought, well, you know, maybe if I have a 20 minute nap, because I used to watch the show Mythbusters. Have you guys ever watched that show? I loved that show when it was on. Um, but they did this whole study on uh, sleep, and they did some testing where the team members, they, they went either through no sleep, and then they had to perform certain activities. But then they also did tests where they had like 20 minutes of sleep. And they found that 20 minutes, um, 90 minutes, um, were good windows of sleep. And hey, Sam, thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Yes, I guess it's after midnight here. Um, so, yes, yeah, so understanding that um, I was going to have this 20 minute nap and that would recharge me and it would give me a little bit more energy. Now, they also found that when people took that 20 minute nap, um, they also woke up pretty angry and aggressive. And that can be a good thing, right? You, if you channel that energy correctly, right? You can uh, get a lot of stuff done when you're ticked off, right? Like when you get fed up of the things that are bugging you, right? You get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you go, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of my own shit. And you decide, that's it. I'm going to do something about it. And you channel that energy into something that's actually productive. It can be really beneficial. Now me, I took the hour and a half route um, and that allowed me to um, wake up I, at first I was a bit groggy, but then I was refreshed and now I have the energy to do what it is that I need to do. It shifted my mindset, my energy, my well-being, everything about me in just a short amount. And I wonder how many of the world's problems would be solved if, you know, we just had a little nap, you know, are we just a little bit cranky that we just need a nap, you know, like kids at school, you know, when they're in nursery or whatever, they just, they need a lay down. <laughs> in my day and age, it would be, you need a spanking and put to bed. <laughs> now, that's a whole other topic, and that could be taken on a completely different route. So, I'm not going down that path, um, but, you know, <laughs> um, understanding that a lot of times, some of the problems, some of the unhappiness that we're facing has to do, and our inability to move forward or do the things that we know that we want to do. I know if I am tired and I am not well rested, my food choices suck ass. I will not eat the right things. I'm craving all kinds of stuff. Why? Because my body is telling me that I am craving energy and I've spent most of my life in a dysfunctional state that reaches out for incorrect tools to try and solve a problem because I wasn't smart enough to, and I was traumatized most of my life. So um, not being able to tap into the fact that I needed actual sleep, I needed proper rest. And that felt abnormal to me to be rested. It felt normal to me to be exhausted, tired, angry, frustrated, all of those kind of things. That was a normal, hypervigilant, always on constant alert of what kind of problem could come up. And that's what happens when you grow up in an environment where you're in constant survival mode. You're in a constant state of threat. So that becomes a normal way of being. And when you operate in that way to to move to a state of peace, of harmony, of um, being well rested and energized, it feels abnormal. It feels threatening to be in that state. It is weird. And there's a part of us that keeps trying to call back and keeps trying to go back to 
old behaviors. And if you find yourself in that state when you are trying to make a change, I want you to know that is a normal state of being. Um, when you go through change, that it will bring up emotions, it will bring up fear within you that is going to tell you to change back. And if it's not coming from you, I can promise you it will come from other people around you. And it's not coming from a bad place. You have to understand they don't understand your motivation, your reasons, your drive for wanting to enact this change. And there's nothing scarier than having a change forced upon us, even if it's something that we requested, that we wanted we will often vacillate between going back and forth to the old ways and the new ways. And it's kind of like this pendulum swings back and forth from the old way to the new way. And eventually we will settle down if we are consistent enough to stay in the new way. And that becomes our new way of being as we go through these different changes. And so as we're doing this stuff, being able to tap into our inner voice, our inner wisdom is something that is crucial for our success because especially if you've grown up in an environment where you were in a constant state of threat and even if it wasn't uh, an environment that you grew up in, maybe you joined a work environment that was toxic as fuck and and their unhealed trauma became now your trauma. Um, and But more than likely, if you go to a work environment and they hire you on, the rocks in your head are going to fit the holes in theirs and vice versa, right? <laughs> so that is an expression that I had heard a long time ago, and that really resonated with me because um, and another way to do it is a two doesn't pick a ten or a ten doesn't pick a two kind of thing, right? Um, and, and I don't like that kind of numbering system, but it's more energy level, right? Of that if you are in a good space that you have done healing inner work, it's going to be a lot harder for you to resonate for a long period of time with somebody who's in a lower vibration and vice versa. It's going to be exhausting for both of you and learning to, and it doesn't mean, make either one of you wrong. It just makes it that you're on a different part of your journey. And so it's not, um, I don't like using labels like, oh, that person's a narcissist, that person's an empath, uh, all that kind of stuff. To me, that stuff doesn't make sense. It's, I mean, it makes sense logically to be able to categorize and understand. It's no different than, it's like, okay, well, we understand the difference between a cat and a dog. They're both animals, but, you know, they operate differently. Um, there's things that you can give to a dog that is fine, but if you give that to a cat, it's toxic for them. And learning to understand the differences is important. But one of the things that I think is really important is not to label anybody as beyond fixable because we are all able to learn and grow and adapt so t saying that people cannot change is the worst lie that you can possibly tell somebody because if you desire the change if you are willing to pay the price and understand and face what it is that you need to actually change to become true and authentic within yourself and be able to be honest with yourself, tapping into what it is that you actually need and be willing to do the work that is necessary for those changes to happen, then yes, you can change. Anybody can change and it doesn't matter how far down the, the low vibration scale that you've gone. We all have the ability to climb back up and to change for the better and to make somebody believe that they do not, that they are beyond redemption is the worst crime of all. And I think that we all absolutely can. It doesn't mean that it's easy and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't protect yourself from somebody that is actively acting out and harming either you or those around you. 
but know that we are all deserving of love that we and the moment that we stop persecuting somebody else and demonizing another fellow human being the faster that we are going to be able to actually change this world for the good and really make a difference in the lives of the people around us and we do that by starting with ourselves and doing that inner work ourselves because when we can change our own world and we can change our own perceptions and we can see things from a perspective of love instead of a perspective of fear, which is false evidence appearing real anyway, when we are able to clear that fog for ourselves, then we can share that and we can bring that light within us to other people. And that's how we are able to not only change ourselves, but we can change those that are around us and for the better. Now, there's a whole process that you need to be able to go through. There's tools that you need to be able to tap into to be able to understand this and really dive deep with the inner work. Um, I have done this so many times. And in the last couple of years, I had to dust off the old tools because I had things pretty cushy for a while <laughs> and uh, my life kind of got blown up for the last couple of years and I'm grateful for that. Uh, it really woke me up. It's been challenging. It's been difficult, but this was also part of what I needed to go through in order to be able to tap into how did I get to this state? Because what was happening is people would look at me and it's like, well, you're so happy. You don't have any problems. And it's like, I forgot how hard the journey was to get to where I was. And in order for me to be able to coach people and help people through this process, I needed to remember what it was like to be in that state of suffering, to be in that, um, that wanting to die feeling, that hopeless, helpless, unable to change and it feeling like it didn't matter what you did, nothing was working. I needed to be reminded of what that was like and to dust off the tools that I use to, to get myself out of those challenging situations. And I had been using these in like work environments and corporate. Um, I used this when I was on change management teams. And for those of you that don't know what the hell is change management team, I've never heard of that before. Change management is... Um, a process that is used to help with the people side of change because you can implement a system like say a new computer system, um, a new process, a new culture, but if you do not get people and you are not able to persuade people to buy into these changes, then these changes will not stick. You will not get a return on your investment, an ROI, it will cost you money in the long run because people, people, or like in Jurassic Park, life always finds a way. We are going to find a way to screw things up and find a way to work around and circumvent any systems that you implement. And um, this is a normal human condition uh, because if people feel that the change has been forced upon them, that they don't buy in, they don't see the need for the change, or they see the change as something too painful, um, not productive, that their old ways were better, or they don't understand that their um, wanting to go back to old ways is just a fear response and helping them feel safe with the new way. The new way of being is the actual way that you get buy-in, that you show them that the new way is actually better. And you can't do this through force and intimidation and fear tactics. In order to change people's minds, you have to understand where they're at right now. You have to understand why are they resistant to the change. You have to show them what's in it for them. Why is it a benefit for them to change? And if you can't um, adequately close them on that, then I can promise you they will not make those changes. And if they haven't made those changes, then you've been effective 
ineffective at being able to persuade them to do something that is actually good for them. Now, if it's not actually good for them, they're going to feel that on an energetic level. They are going to feel that something's off here and they can't quite put their finger on it. And that's their intuition that kicks in. That is that gut instinct, that intuitive feel of something is off. And yet so many times we will discount those feelings for a couple of different reasons. One, we're not in touch with our feelings. So if you are not in touch with your emotions, then you will discount proof, energy that's coming up that you feel in your physical body. You will deny the feeling that you have because what is presenting in front of you, what you see as truth and logic in the real world <laughs> um, will will tell you, oh, you're making a big deal. Or you might be directly gaslit by somebody telling you you're making a big deal out of nothing. Oh, um, you're always looking for problems. You're so dramatic, blah, blah, blah. Something to discount how it is that you're feeling. If you don't have the correct tools to be able to understand how to um, identify your emotions in a proper way, if you don't... Um, know what's going on in your body, you're not able to tap into this, or you've been so censored or so conditioned throughout your life in various different ways to ignore, discount, um, minimize whatever it is that you're feeling. And guys are more susceptible to this than women. Women are a little bit more, um, it's understandable that women are supposed to be emotional, but guys are taught from a very young age to discount, shake it off, walk it off, don't feel, don't cry, don't do any of those kind of things, don't tap into your emotions, and it robs you of your intuition. And all human beings, men and women, have the ability to tap into this emotional side so that they can make not only logical decisions, but ones that are from the heart. And the ones that are from the heart have the most benefit, the most power, um, the most energy, high vibration energy that gives back to the world, that you are able to serve at a higher capacity and be a stronger leader if you are able to tap into your emotions, it is through denying our emotions that we numb ourselves out or we look for other substances to numb ourselves because we haven't been properly taught how to process these emotions, how to um, transmute them, how to move through them in a way that's actually effective, productive, and that you'll understand what's going on, that you are able to remove that fear and transition into a space of love. And when you are able to do that, you can live from a place of happiness, a place of strength, a place of serving, a place of giving and helping. And these are really strong characteristics that when we share that energy with others, it not only elevates us, but it elevates others because the most love that you are able to feel at the highest potential is when we are able to give from ourselves to others and we pour into others and there's a reciprocal uh, energy of being able to give and receive and we all have that capability and being able to tap into that and really um, harness that is what I help with. Um, this is a path that I have traveled many, many times. I've dusted off the tools and I know technically it's after midnight, but I'm waiting until tomorrow. I need a bit more time. Um, <laughs> I had to take my nap today uh, to be able to do that, but I was able to come on tonight. But what I do have is I am putting together, um, and it's a beta program, so I'm in the process of putting all of these pieces together to try and show you guys the proper tools to 
help you transition through. And this program is an eight-week program. It is going to be targeted more towards business owners because what I teach, it's not just the spiritual side, but it's a hybrid of being able to pull together the spiritual side and I tap into those change management um, techniques that I've used in corporate Fortune 500 companies uh, that I've worked for and I've done this even before I ever took any training. So I have real life practical experience of many examples that I can share with a business owner to be able to help you understand not only your emotions, but the emotions of what's going on with your team, helping them buy in, helping them feel happier, helping you feel happier so that you can lead in a stronger way and help guide people. Without all of this undealt with trauma and just because you think oh we don't you know the days of um trying to run a business of like oh it's just business it's not personal and like no everything is personal you are dealing with a human being your entire business only exists to serve another human being even if you deal with tech i promise you if you are not solving a problem for a person then your business will not exist. So understanding emotions, because all human beings have emotions um, and they have feelings, that's what makes us human, and being able to understand those at a deeper level, both for yourself and for the people around you, is something that will help you be happier. And why is it important to be happy? You're like, ah, Tina, I don't care about being happy. You just have to hustle and grind. Yeah, sure. Great way to burn yourself out and burn your team out and lose good people, all of that kind of stuff. This will give you a bigger return on your investment. You being able to cut through the shit because I can promise you, just because you push it underground, it's like putting an elephant under a carpet and pretending it's not there right? There is an elephant in the room that needs to be talked about and understanding how to do that in a way that helps people because there are so many people who have been through trauma and I, I went through trauma. I was sexually abused and I went through a lot of therapy for that and it's only when I went to create a coaching program to help sales reps and closers to heal past trauma because I did this after doing role plays and I started to do some research because I wanted to make sure I was, wasn't was teaching them incorrect stuff. And I realized that, shit, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I hadn't dealt with. I didn't realize because I had been so focused on the obvious forms of trauma that I wasn't aware of the more nuanced stuff. Um, the neglect that I went through and how that set me up to be in an environment that where toxicity and um, trauma was allowed to thrive. Um, stuff that I dealt with certain layers of the trauma, but there was more there. I hadn't cleaned all of it out. And I think it is an ongoing process. And I don't recommend forcing anybody to try and pull up everything that they've been through all at once. I think that creates more trauma for people, um, that it is a matter of going through this in a way that you know, your body knows when it's time for you to start to heal this stuff because things will start popping up in your mind, that inner voice, um, things will start happening in your life and that will tell you that you are now ready to start to deal with this stuff. Um, this happens with survivors a lot that they'll start having flashbacks to memories of things that it's like, well, why am I thinking of that? Why did that come up? For some people, it can be pretty scary because they don't understand what's happening or why these things are coming up. And um, what I want you to know is that if you are having flashbacks, that is happening because you are now ready to start to work through this. And if you feel that you need some help, obviously, if you need a professional therapist, I highly recommend going through that. But if you've gone through therapy 
and you're like, this didn't actually work for me, or I, it doesn't resonate, or it didn't actually change anything for me. And with the trainings that I'm providing, so I provide the free trainings, I upload the uh, live trainings on my YouTube channel, which is Coach Tina B125. Uh, go over there, take a, uh, a look at the other trainings that I've uploaded. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when I upload a new video. So if you want, you can go through that free training. And I am giving everything that I have, and you can go through that the long way, and you can just go through it at your own pace when you're ready. However, if you want to speed things up, and this is another reason why I'm targeting uh, working with business owners, is because I love business, and this is something that I did in my corporate life, that I was always helping out um, VPs, presidents, any, any of my senior leaders, that they go through frustrations on a daily basis. And they can't complain downwards to their team. They can't complain outward to their family because that causes they're bringing their work home and that's bringing a lot of stress to the family. So they can't talk about things there. They can't talk about with their friends because, you know, um, now they don't, especially if it's a relationship thing, they don't feel like they can open up there because, well, now their friends are going to judge their partner. So they feel oftentimes that they have no one that they can truly talk to, nobody that they can open up in a safe way that isn't going to threaten their business, that isn't going to cause a problem. Hang on just a second, guys. My laptop is about to die, and I need to grab the charger. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Um, so, and I understand as a business owner, you're like, Tina, why do I have to worry about somebody else's therapy? Like, I don't have time for this. Can't people fix their own stuff? We have an employee assistance program. Why can't they go that route? Why, why do I have to deal with this stuff? Well, because I can promise you they're undealt with trauma and not being trauma aware, not having you trauma aware, not having your, your team trauma aware, it is costing your business. And I have seen this so many times in all kinds of organizations, really high level organizations of where these undealt with ways of coping because people aren't aware of how they've been affected by either past experiences, whether that's from childhood or previous work environments. I promise you, you are going to have to deal with somebody else's trauma and it will affect your business. So being able to be aware of this and be able to change this so that everybody is working in an effective way because we understand the emotional side of business. And I can promise you there is a highly emotional side of business. And we like to think it's all systems and logic. And um, while it's good that there is structure, there, being able to understand this. And I have seen companies realizing and tapping into this, and I've been part of culture changes for huge enterprises to be able to tap into this kind of stuff and implement it, whether that's an ISO program. Um, and I can promise you, all of the stuff that's going to stop you, whether you're putting in a new system, it's going to be people's fears their lack of understanding, their lack of emotional intelligence, their lack of awareness that is going to cause you a lot of problems, a lot of unnecessary headache, 
all because it's not tapped in and not learning this kind of stuff. So my program is going to focus on helping you understand this first. And then uh, should you want help with your team, then we can talk about that after we've got you through the program, after you have the foundational tools, maybe it'll be enough that that's all you need and you can take that, you can run with it, you can roll that out within your own team and you're good to go. However, if you want to do this faster, if you don't have the bandwidth, the time, or maybe you're like, okay, I've learned enough for me, but it would just be much easier for you to help Tina, then we can talk about that after we go through this because I need to make sure that you and I are aligned before I come on and take on something within your business on a change management scale to be able to help your people move forward in a faster way, help them understand these emotions so that they can be happier, so that you can have a happier work environment, which equals a more productive work environment. Because if you think of anybody who, think of somebody who just loves their job. They love everything that they do. They love the people that they work with. They love the challenge that they have, they love the rewards that they're getting from doing this job. They could do this all day, every day, and it's, it's what fills them up. Think of how productive that person is versus somebody who is just going through the motions. They're numb to their feelings. They're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, are you going to pay me more money? Um, I'm not working with that person. I can't stand that person, right? It's always a battle. It's always a struggle. There's always resistance because people are not in a state of love. They're either maybe not in the right role within the organization or some things have happened that they feel like their contribution isn't valued within the organization. So they get discouraged. They don't know how to move through those feelings or they've tried and they've been beaten down maybe by somebody within the organization that felt threatened by them and squashed their uh, enthusiasm, squashed their creativity, squashed their initiative. Um, to try and change and make things better because it maybe they felt it made them look bad. I've seen that happen many, many times. Um, and Or maybe it's just a matter of they thought it was a good idea, but the timing wasn't right to implement something, but they didn't communicate properly in an effective way. They weren't open. They weren't honest about how they communicated the situation so it left the other person to make up their own conclusions and those conclusions will be based on whatever their previous filters whatever their previous experiences were so if their previous experiences came from trauma and they have a mindset of like see it doesn't matter what I say nobody listens to me nobody pays attention to me um, I'm insignificant and if you have people that are thinking that way even if it's only for a couple of days and then they get back to their old, their their self and you kind of maybe crack the whip or do whatever and get them back on track. If they're not aware of how to tune into their own inner voice and listen to what those messages are telling them and how to transmute them, how to change them, how to move through those emotions in a way that's effective to get them back on track, then I promise you that is slowing down things uh, not only for them are they unhappy but it is slowly eroding away at your business and um, although they may not be actively sabotaging if it's left unaddressed it will get to the point where there's active sabotage or active resistance in just not wanting to buy into things not trusting not believing avoiding all of these different kinds of things are hidden in your work environment and helping you uncover these by working with you one-on-one -on -one is the way that we can start to go through this process of understanding these emotions, tapping into it and being able to change and transmute that. So um, without, and, and it's enough of a hybrid because I don't know about you guys, but anytime 
I've got a foot in both worlds. I understand some of the spiritual stuff, but I'm not all in spiritual. I'm not into big meditations, cross-legged, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm aware of it. That's too far to that way. <laughs> whatever, left, right, whatever. I don't know which way is which. Um, and then there's the other side, which is all logical, where you don't believe in any of that. And I'm like, well, I'm not that way either, right? I'm a balance of both. I understand both sides. So if you do embrace more of the spiritual side, we can still work together. If you do embrace more of the logical side, we can still work together. So I will be giving the details of how to work with me um, tomorrow uh, in my training tomorrow night. I'll be unveiling the program, what we can go through, what you can expect, and how you can book a call with me to talk about whether or not we're actually a good fit. And this isn't going to be a typical sales call. I know how to do the typical sales calls, but this is not going to be that. I'm going to be extremely selective as to who I work with because it requires a whole lot of energy from me. And I would rather go without a client than work with a client that is not the right fit, okay? Um, so as I'm going through this, because I am still putting together everything and um, uncovering the things that I need to do, it will be beta pricing. This will be the lowest price that you will be able to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And as I go along and develop this program even further and fine tune it, um, like I said, I've had to go the last couple of years of tapping into what were the tools I used to get myself out of those dark places, to shift to that happier perspective? What did I use and how did I do this? And getting back through this and putting these together in a way that's logical, that makes sense for you guys um, as a pathway that you can follow. But where you're going to get the most benefit isn't so much of you going through a course or program, although I will have that for you. Um, it will be that one-on-one -on -one connection. So if you are resonating with me, if you find the information that I'm sharing with you um, is helping you, that you're able to apply some of the stuff that I've already taught you and you're getting benefit of it, then that would probably be a good indicator that we could go further and work together closely um, on a deeper level because I can promise you as good as I am at being able to explain and articulate and talk about different things, I am a much better listener. I am a stronger listener. I've done this many times throughout my corporate life and I just realized I'm circling back to what I was talking about earlier, um, where I would, I would be a safe place for the senior leadership that I worked with to be able to open up and share things. And sometimes it was about their spouse or their girlfriend or um, a family member that they were dealing with, that they were struggling with um, frustrations or anger or um, irritations, uh, grief, loss of a family member, and just going through that and just being able to be there and um, help them through those challenging emotions by being present and being able to give them feedback and guidance and wisdom. And I can't, this is not something that I can tell you, this is how I'm going to do it because I need you as part of that equation because I know I will be able to tap into what it is that you need at that particular time and be able to share that with you and to give you that feedback and that guidance based on what you are able to open up and share with me. All I can do is provide you that safe place that it will not go beyond our coaching sessions, that I can help provide you that observation, that guidance, that safe place that you can open up and share what's going on with you um, without it affecting your business, without other people seeing what's going on with you, that you can still be that strong leader. Yes, Terry, of course you can ask a question. How can I help you? Mm 
because the goal is to get you to an, a happier place. And one of the worst and heaviest feelings that you can have is to feel like you're carrying all of these burdens on your own and that you can't actually open up and talk about these things. Because when you cannot truly talk about what's going on with you, that stuff sits inside you and it festers and it creates all of this chaos and you as a business owner you have so much to do in a day as a leader that you cannot afford to waste time trying to go through these emotions so a faster way is being able to talk that out in a safe place safe place I can give you guidance. I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but I understand business. I love business. I have worked for Fortune 500 companies. Um, in a slow year, I closed over 10 million while I was snoozing on the couch in 2020 when you weren't able to get any logistics contracts. Um, I couldn't close any new ones, and I still had 43% of the the sales for my team and that is something that I did when I wasn't even trying and I was bored so I took on other projects where I was coaching I basically had three jobs I was coaching I was working my full-time job and I took on a temporary project where I was leading a sales team of 30 closers um, so and we generated 1.18 million in 45 days so that's what I did as a side gig, as a side hustle, <laughs> um, for fun. <laughs> These are things that I did. And I was doing a training like this where I donated an hour of my time on a daily basis to help other people. And for me, that wasn't a drain on my energy. That actually filled me up by being able to provide that space and, um, and seeing other people grow and seeing other people flourish is something that really energizes me and it's something I love to do so um, if that kind of coaching is something that you feel like you might need in your life um, then I invite you to come back again tomorrow um, also check out my YouTube channel coach Tina B 125 Check that out. Check out my other videos, especially if this is your first time joining in. Then um, you can take a look at um, things that I talk about, how I talk about them. And if you find that beneficial, if you find that that is speaking to you, then tomorrow after I announce the information of how the program is going to work, then you can book in a call with me and you can see if I might be a good fit to help you through this process. So guys, with that, I'm going to wrap up tonight. I hope you have a great night and uh, I'll be back again tomorrow to celebrate my birthday with you guys. All right, guys. And there's Felix. I've already finished. You can yell all you want. <laughs> all right, guys, have a great night and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.